Hello friends, welcome to Testing Shala YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to talk about checklist for the acceptance testing. So I am going to talk in detail about what all the elements or what all the things we will have to put it as a checklist just to ensure that we bring the acceptance testing in a more optimized way. Before proceeding further, if you have visited Testing Shala YouTube channel for the first time, then please click on subscribe button and bell notification so that all our future videos related to software testing will be in your inbox that help you to enhance your software testing skills. I have given 10 point checklist for the acceptance testing which you need to go through that would help you to perform acceptance testing successfully. Let's move on to understand what are those uh, the checklist for the acceptance testing. So first of all we should identify the POC. The, PO the UIT will be done by the business team or it could be client or from the other stakeholders. So we will have to identify as a first point we will have to identify who is the POC who will be performing these UITs. That is the first key thing as part of your checklist you should identify who is that person who is going to do the user acceptance testing. Second item you should validate as part of the checklist is UIT requirement. Against what requirement you will be testing the application as part of the user acceptance testing. So that will have to get it clarified. If you are using an agile, let's say if you are using an agile then your job becomes very easy. For every user story there will be a clear definition of acceptance criteria user acceptance criteria that you can refer against what we need to validate if everything it has been mentioned in the acceptance criteria it is working then the user acceptance testing will be passing the first thing you should identify the POC second thing you should identify acceptance requirements which will have to validate it then let's move on to the third the UIT will be done by the business team or end user we have to clearly define what is the milestone or what is the frequency we will have to execute these UAT test cases. If you think about in waterfall model, normally the UAT will be done at the end of the testing cycle. But with the new changes in the development cycles where everybody is bringing agile model, it is always good to recommend if possible every sprint if the UIT being executed or worst situation by two sprints or maximum within three sprints so that the business people can give the feedback back to the development so that the development team can fix as early as possible otherwise the cost of fixing those issues would be very high. They said we should not uh, perform the UIT at the end of the release cycle because that would become again uh, a waterfall model the performing UIT at the end of the cycle it doesn't add any value even if they find issues the cost of fixing those issues will be very high and again the timeline all those things would be very tight enough so that uh, they may say we cannot fix it at this moment we will defer it to the later state and we will fix it later. Right? Put a schedule, schedule and milestones for performing the UIT test. Move on to the fourth checklist uh, we should uh, verify here is we should we should provide a clear communication to the business team on the build details or environment details which they need to use for testing well in advance so that they should not get into confusion and they should not use some build which is irrelevant for the testing there is a proper communication plan should be there to verify to provide the right build details and environment details that helps the business users or end users to validate in a right environment. That is the fourth checklist we should track it very clearly. Then let's move on to the fifth ch criteria or checklist is entry and exit criteria should be clearly defined because acceptance testing is also another level of testing where we should clearly define what is the entry criteria for acceptance testing and when we say acceptance testing is cleared the testing means it has passed all the perspective 
So it, then it should clearly defining the entry and exit criteria for the acceptance criteria very effectively. Then sixth one is because all these tests will be done by the business team or end user, it is always good to get some sources from the testing team to support the UIT person. Because when the end user or business users, when they are performing tests, they may they they get into many issues and someone is required to clarify their issues so hence it is always advisable to pair this testing team person to the poc who is going to test the uit that is the sixth thing you should look into that when you are performing acceptance testing so have a representation from the testing team and assist the the poc when he is doing the uit that is a sixth uh, checklist you should validate it the seventh is it is always good to use tools to track acceptance testing progress. The gone are the days where people are using the Excel spreadsheets. Now we should use a we should use good test management tool to track the UAT progress just to ensure that whether the business people or end users they are on track in their executions or not. This is the seventh checklist you should validate. The eighth item you should validate as part of the acceptance testing here is we should track all the executions and records and all the results. This is once the UAT team start executing the test cases we should be able to track in the tool itself so that we can clearly look on step by step then look on where really issues are getting uh, bombarded and what is the results for those failures everything you can look we can look into the using the tools the eighth checkpoint we should track here is the test metrics we should track all the test metrics which are agreed between the end users or business users who is performing UAT with the stakeholders who is going to sign up for the release. So we should have a clear understanding what all the metrics will be tracking as part of the UAT acceptance testing. And based on that we should track all these test metrics as and when we are making a progress in the UAT testing. The the tenth or the last uh, point we should validate for acceptance testing is test reporting. This is very important. When the UAT testing is in progress, there should be a clear test report mechanisms to be adopted where the person who is doing UAT has to communicate to the, all the stakeholder what is the progress of their testing. Did they find any critical issues or very major issues which they wanted to report? everything will be clearly sending as a daily status report or weekly status report whatever the report which is agreed upon those things will be clearly documented in the communication plan so one is the status of the uh, needs to be communicated to all the stakeholders and have a regular touch base meetings with the stakeholders just to ensure that everybody will be in the same page when user acceptance testing is in progress. I hope you understood all the 10 point checklist. 10 point uh, checklist we should be adhere when you are performing user acceptance testing. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have visited Testing Shala YouTube channel for the first time then please click on subscribe and bell notification so that all our future videos related to software testing will be in your inbox that would help you to enhance your testing skills. Thanks for watching this video. Bye for now. Take care.